Hello, everyone. Um, our next guest needs no introduction. He is a man responsible for a YouTube channel that has over 1.3 million subscribers. His videos have been watched 1 billion times or more than 1 billion times on YouTube. Um, as I mentioned, he's a man that needs no introduction. Robbie from AFTV. How are you, my friend? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for joining Thanks. us. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, no, so we we brought on Robbie because uh, obviously we're in the eve of uh, of the Arsenal fixture with uh, with Benfica for the Europa League. So we felt what better man to to bring in uh, than Robbie, right? And Robbie, uh, before we, we we start, I gotta I gotta say um, I'm an indirect fan of AFTV, and when I say indirect, is because I'm not a supporter of Arsenal, uh, but certainly the work that you guys have created, this platform that you guys have created in the time where clubs and players are so safeguarded or so blocked from the media and, and given access to, to fans, that when you have a platform like yours created by fans, uh, that's hears the opinion of fans and also puts out, you know, clear passion and, and truthfulness on what you feel about the club is something that we draw some inspiration for as a Benfica podcast. So so thank you for, for that. And certainly you guys are doing a great service. And, and as your numbers show on, on YouTube and on all your other platforms, uh, people enjoy what you do. I appreciate that, man. Thank you very much. And, um, you know, we're, we're, we're always glad that we're we're inspiring people to do the same sort of thing for their teams, you know, because we've all... We, we, we're all football fans, first and foremost, but we've all got our teams that we love, that we're passionate about. And I, and I, I like to hear from the real fans, you know what I mean? You, you've got all these pundits and ex-players and that, but sometimes you might have an ex-player who's not even been to see the, game, the, the ground or see the team since he stopped playing for the team. Or with an agenda. You know, if I'm speaking to you guys, I know that you guys are diehard Benfica fans, you know, and so, yeah, I, I, love, I love speaking to fans. No, yeah, man, so we, we appreciate you coming on, Robbie. As Alfredo said, and I, I think I told you before, all fair, you guys are great inspiration not only to us, but I'm pretty sure uh, even a lot of your competitors weren't, won't admit it uh, to you directly, but they've also taken some of that inspiration, some of what you've done and applied it to, to their work. So, man, we couldn't be happier to have the great Robbie from AFTV. All we need is, what's his name? Gonosaurus. What's his name? The Gonosaurus. <laughs> Gonosaurus. That, that would be uh, icing on the cake right now. But look, man, we're very, very happy. Unfortunately, we're not as happy to be facing Arsenal in, in, in this next round <laughs> as we are to have you here on the podcast. But uh, thank you very much. No yeah. worries, man. Yeah, so let's let's get right into it. Uh, Robbie, I'll, I'll ask you this, right? Arsenal is currently 10th in the league. Is the position in the league reflective of what Arsenal season has been so far? I think it is, yeah. I think it is. It's been a very poor season by Arsenal. We've lost 10 games, which is, I, I can just never, ever remember Arsenal losing. You know, I mean, five games is normally bad. Five or six games, that's normally like, we lost six games in the season. But this season, I mean, I, listen, it's a crazy season because of the pandemic. So you've got to take that into account. But we, we've been having a really poor season and it's been really up and down. Um, one minute you think that we've come out of it and we're, we're playing really well again. And then the next minute we'll have another setback, you know. So it's been a real up and down season and a real sort of transition season for the club. You know what I mean? Uh, Mikel Arteta, this is like his first full season in the Premier League as a, as a Premier League manager. Um and, you know, I think sometimes he struggled. But then I think also there's been a lot of sort of off-the-pitch things around Arsenal that haven't been great and that has made his job even more difficult. But, yeah, it's been – it has been a poor season for Arsenal. As you mentioned, your season, right? It's been a poor season, in your own words, for Arsenal. Uh, due to the fact you're out of the FA, you know, everything – every other competition, you're basically out of it, right? It's called a spade a spade. Mm -hmm. Does Europa, does Europa League, I, I can't say that word in English. I got to say it like in the Portuguese accent. Does Europa League now take on a different importance in Arsenal season? Europa League, as far as the fans is concerned, and this is really funny because normally you'd speak to fans um, of Arsenal and you mention that word Europa League and everyone, the, the first word you hear come out of a lot of fans' mouths is, oh, I couldn't give up. I, I mean, <laughs> I don't care. Who cares about the Europa League, um, Tim Pot Cup, all them sort of things, right? But this season, 
it's priority number one to all fans. They're like, we want to win the Europa League. We have to win the Europa League. We have to go far in the Europa League. So this is a very, very important game for us coming up on Thursday night. This is a... Every Arsenal fan views this next two games against Benfica as absolutely must win. You know, yeah. we, appreciate, we appreciate that Benfica are a very good team, but we look on it and we say... This is a must win for Arsenal season. So this is priority number one now. This is yeah. this competition is your last hope in, in, into qualifying for next year's Champions League. You have to win it because the oh. way your season's going, right? I mean, I'm pretty yeah, sure. Yeah, we a have lot no of that. hope. Despite it being a mad season, and you know what, you can just go on a little run in the in the league, and next minute you know you're up near the top four, or, you know. But despite that, you know. I, I feel it's our only hope. Even if you look at the next set of games Arsenal have got coming up in between these games against Benfica, we play Manchester City next week weekend. Nobody thinks we're going to get anything out of that. And then we go to Leicester away. Um, Leicester are second in the league at the moment and they've been playing really, really well. And we've got a poor record going away there. And they beat us earlier in the season as well. So, you know, no one's giving, holding out any hope for the league. It's all on the Europa League. That is our only hope of Europe next season. Um, it, well, in Champions League next season, is to win the Europa League. And um, yeah, and so it's priority number one right now. Yeah, considering all the, the, the big caliber teams that are in the Europa League this year, when Arsenal drew Benfica, what was that that overall feel as a, as a fan? Did you feel that, well... This is a team that we could probably beat despite the season that we're having. What was that feeling? No, I think every fan, when we drew Benfica, it was like, oh, gosh. You know what I mean? Because particularly at that time, we weren't playing well. And plus as well, we just wanted like a favorable draw. We wanted like a, you know, you want a nice, easy draw now. You know what I mean? But then I looked on it, I was like, bloody hell, why did we get Benfica? You know I mean? You look at what some of the other English teams got. They got favorable, easier draws, you know? So we, we appreciate that Benfica are a very good side. You know I mean? Um, top side in Portugal. Bags and bags of European pedigree. You know, and so, no, we when the draw came out, we were very fearful of that because we know that we're up against a top quality side. So the rumor going on throughout the streets in Lisbon, right? And you obviously, you pretty much just put it to bed, was that... Robbie from AFTV went streaking down the streets of London when this draw came out. So there's absolutely no truth behind that. There's absolutely, I wouldn't do that anyway, but there's absolutely, there's absolutely, I might actually, I might do that if this whole, if someone turned around tomorrow and said coronavirus is finished completely, then I'll do that. Put on the ball rat speedo. <laughs> but um, no, listen, when the draw came out and I saw it was Benfica, I was like, oh no, I'm fearful of this draw because, you know, we're not up against, you know, your manager is a manager of the a lot of pedigree. You know, Benfica is a big name. And for me, no. I mean, when that came out, I was like, no. <laughs> uh, Benfica in the later rounds? Yes. But you're like, you, you, we're like, nah, that's not, that doesn't feel like a reward for topping our group. You know, because yeah. we, we, you know, in the qualifiers, we won every game. And yeah, we won I, every game very easily, but we had a very easy group, to be honest. But we, but did, we did too, but we still try, We still drew three and won three. And we actually allowed Rangers to come out first. Had we done our, had we handled our business, you most likely would have been playing, you know, Stevie G's uh, Rangers as opposed to mm. Benfica. So, yeah, and and Benfica got the reward they deserved for finishing second in that group, exactly. where they should have they should have cleared it. So, um, Robbie, let me let me ask you this: the the past matches between uh, Benfica and Arsenal, albeit uh, friendlies, Arsenal yeah. has scored a total of five goals against <laughs> against <game>. Benfica. <laughs> do do you um do you expect that is Arsenal a team that matches up well against Benfica's style, and that's why they've been able to be so so successful, albeit in friendlies? Yeah, I, I I never like to take friendlies into account because friendlies, you know, I mean, you, you know, swap the team at half time and the intensity is not the same. So I, I wouldn't even look at that a friendly at all. But I do think that Benfica's style of football does suit Arsenal because Arsenal, where we've really struggled this season is against teams that have come and played this sort of low block very defensive, catch-you-on-the-counter-attack style. Those are the teams that we struggled against. 
Whereas when teams come and, you know, they play a high back line, they come to have a, you know, attack, we've done well against those teams. I mean, we played uh, Leeds um, at the weekend. That's what Leeds are, you know, under Bielsa. Um, they're renowned for that. You know what I mean? They play a high line, they attack. And what basically Arsenal did to Leeds is they did, you know, they played them at their own game. So, you know, we, we closed down Leeds. We pressed, pressed them into loads and loads of mistakes. Um, and if you can get the ball forward to quickly to our front players, we do have players that can hurt Benfica. I mean, Aubameyang, um, he scored a hat-trick at the weekend. He scored five goals now in his last two Premier League starts. And this is really encouraging for Arsenal fans because he's been having a very poor season by his high standards. He, he's been basically the guy that's carried us over the last couple of seasons. And this year, he's not been firing, but he's showing signs over the last few games that he's firing again. And the hat-trick, I mean, that was his first hat-trick in the Premier League, which was a surprise. But um, he looked on fire at the weekend and he will be chomping at the bit to start the game against Benfica. Then there's Pepe, who's coming back into, you know, he, he, he's a guy that we, you know, he's our most expensive player. We bought him for a lot of money. He's really underperformed since we bought him in. But he's one of these guys that on his given day, he's unplayable. And he, over the last few games, we shifted him over onto the left-hand side instead of playing him on the right. And he's been brilliant. I'd say he's been the go-to player. But the player that I feel that, you know, is the one of the most important players in Arsenal's team right now, and maybe a lot of Benfica fans might not even know him that well, but he is the, the, the real danger player. And that is um, Bakayo Saka, who's like a kid. He's 19. He's come through Arsenal's academy. He has been absolutely brilliant this season and last season. He is, I consider him as possibly one of the best young players in Europe. If he's definitely, um, you know, it's probably between him and Phil Foden of City as the best young player in the, in the Premier League right now. He is brilliant. He's been carrying Arsenal this season. He's quick, he's strong, he's tricky, he can score. He creates a lot of assists. That's the player I really think. If I was like a, um, a coach at Benfica, that in particular would be the player I'd be saying, someone's got to look after him because he's the player. He's been the go-to player this season. He's the player that can create the damage. He's only a young guy, but he's, he's, been, he's been superb. Benfica had themselves a very similar player. Young player, spectacular, unplayable, arguably the best player on the team. But then we sold him to Atletico Madrid. So that's the difference between both of our clubs. But that yeah, being no, said, oh yeah, he's a, he was a great <laughs> player. Well, Felix, yeah. Yeah. Now, that being said, Robert, what can we expect? What can we expect from this fixture, man? Um, I, I know we touched up on some of the key figures, but do you think, due to the fact Benfica have been struggling of late, you think you guys are going to attack Benfica or just going to sit back and, and, and wait to see what happens? Because obviously in a lot of these games, uh, when teams don't know each other really well, the first 10, 15 minutes is just really, you know, touchy, touchy, feel out. Do you think Arsenal is going to attack Benfica and try to take advantage of their, you know, their slow-footed back line right from the start? Or do you think they'll be patient? I do think it will be a patient game. Um, sometimes Mikel Arteta's style looks like it suits cop competitions um, – very well. And, you know, he won He won Arsenal the FA Cup last season against all odds because we was also having a poor season last season. That's what I said, Arsenal going for a lot of transition at the moment. And, you know, we had Manchester City in the semi-final. Everyone were like, you know, what's the even point in even turning up? We went, we done a number on them and we beat them. And uh, then in the final, we beat Chelsea. And we, beat, we won both games convincingly as well. I, I, I feel that, you know, he's a guy that he, he has a tactic that he he will have for Benfica. So I don't think it'll be all out attack. I think it will be built on defence. Our defence has been good this season. Um, it's going to come down, I feel, with Arsenal to team selection. We've got a few injuries to some very important players. Uh, Kieran Tierney at left-back has been brilliant this season when he's played. But the problem with Kieran Tierney is that he's always injured. And he didn't play at the weekend. Now, there's a lot of talk that he's been kind of left back. You know, he's been left out of the, the team. He, he might have been ready, but he was left out because they want him to be fit for the Benfica game. In the midfield is going to be interesting. Emil Smith-Rowe has sort of been playing in that number 10 position. He's another youngster who's come from the academy, 
kind of led to a lot of the turnaround in Arsenal's season because we lacked that player who could play in between the lines. And he's come in and he's been that player. And again, very similar to Saka, energetic, young. He's been brilliant as well. But who's going to partner Granit Xhaka in midfield? That's going to be the interesting one. Thomas Partey's injured at the moment. So um, that's a big blow for Arsenal because he's a top quality player. And when he's played this season, he's looked really, really good. But again, injury prone. It ne never got injured at Atletico Madrid. Yeah. <laughs> Comes to Arsenal every week. He's, you know, I mean, he's limping off. Um, but Danny Ceballos came in at the weekend in that position and looked very, very good. So um, maybe Sabias might come. I think Sabias will come back in again in that position. So I think the team is the team selection is going to be interesting. Um, we've got Odegaard now. Does Odegaard start from the beginning? Does do we start with Lacazette as well? That's a you know, or do we keep Lacazette on the bench as a player that can come in? You know, the team selection is going to be very interesting. But I think with Mikel Arteta, he's a very tactical manager. So I don't think he's going to go out and be all gun ho about this game. Um, it, it's going to be, I think, like what you said, sort of feel out and see what Benfica are about. Arsenal have one Portuguese player on the roster. Any chance he plays Cedric Suarez due to the familiarity with Portuguese teams, Portuguese players, obviously, you know, crosstown rivals, might have a little, you know, the juices flowing, might have a little something extra in the tank. Uh, any chance he plays? Well, I, I like Cedric. And, and the thing is, where he's been a bit unfortunate, is that obviously he's a right back and he's having to play a left back at the moment to cover for Kieran Tierney. So if Kieran Tierney's out, Cedric will definitely play. Um, if Kieran Tierney's back, I'm not sure because he'd probably go with Hector Bellerin, who scored a goal at the weekend. Honestly, I'd pick Cedric over Hector Bellerin because I think he's a better right back. He he gets something down the pitch better. He's uh, got a very good delivery. And I think as well, the factor that you said there, the fact that he's Portuguese, the fact that, you know, he'll be, he, he'll be, he'd love to play against Benfica. So, um, I'd love to see him in there. Um, as I said, if, if Tierney's out at left back, he'll definitely play because he's been covering in that position. Or you could do what our coach, JJ, right? The guy with the great pedigree likes to do. You could put David Luiz at left back as, as he's done for Benfica in the past. That's no. <laughs> another guy that I would love to play against Benfica. <laughs> no, David Luiz, <laughs> listen, it's going to be interesting actually again. Does David Luiz start? I mean, I'd start him. But... um. Or does he go with Rob Holding? He might go Rob Holding, David Luiz. He might go David Luiz and Gabriel. I mean, I want Gabriel to play because Gabriel Magalis, who we bought for, um, bought him from Lille in the summer, has been brilliant in defence. He was out for a little period of time with COVID. I know, I know you've had COVID at, um, problems at Benfica. He came back and then he struggled to get back in the team. And then there's another player, actually, who um, your coach will know, and that's Pablo Mari. Um, who, because your coach was at, Flip, wasn't he managing over in Brazil, wasn't he? Yep. Um, yep. yeah, and he managed, he, he Flamengo, managed, uh, sorry, Flamengo. yeah, Flamengo, and he managed Pablo Mari there. And Pablo Mari was a very important player for him over there. And Pablo Mari's done really, really well, but again, he's been, he was out injured. And the defense has been, you know, the center halves have been playing pretty well. So if you're center half and you're out injured, it's hard to get back in the team. So I, I think Mari will probably be on the bench, but. It's gonna be it's gonna be really interesting to see what the team selection is, um, and a lot of that depends on the fitness of Tierney. If Tierney's fit, he comes back in for me because he is a very very good player. Yeah, the the fact that uh, that this fixtures is being played over two legs perhaps allows for a different approach to each of the fixtures. But Robbie, here's here's where I'll ask you, and uh, understanding that now obviously with the with the latest developments that both of these fixtures are going to be played in neutral ground i believe the, the i believe no i know the first one is going to be played in rome the second mm -hmm. one i believe is going to be played in greece if greece. i'm not, yeah, greece. not mistaken but here's the thing considering the congestion of fixtures that we've had and does it make sense to only have one leg affair being that it's going to be played in neutral ground anyway or does uh, uefa get greedy because of that money Money, money, it's all about the money, man. Because let's be real, it makes sense to just play one legged games, right? Because of the whole problems with COVID, it makes sense to just play one game 
and then progress to the next round. But then they lose out on the TV revenue. And I, I, I can sympathise with them a bit because, you know, they've got TV deals that they're down on the table and they've been, these deals have been made years ago. And, you know, they've promised TV companies two games. So I, I sympathise with them there, but common sense would say one game because, you know, it's hard enough to get one game on, let alone two. But, you know, I, I do try to sometimes look at the problems that they face as well. And, you know, they, they would have done these deals, as I said, and they would have promised these things. So it's going to have to be the two games. I mean, two games is a fairer outcome anyway than one-off games. But, you know, um, it would have made more sense to just play one. All right, Robbie, yeah. as Alfredo mentioned before, the last two encounters, obviously, um, albeit Emirates Cup, you know, preseason friendlies and stuff. Arsenal have beaten Benfica 5-1 and 5-2 in back-to-back -back games. The great, Please, no. the great Gunners legend, Yaya Sanogo, scoring four of those goals in one game, which I still have <laughs> exactly. nightmares about that this, that, till this day. Do you expect uh, the result to be similar. Uh, let's hear your prediction for, for this match. I'm going to you you after the first leg, but for now, at least the first leg. Yeah, absolutely no chance. It's going to be a 5-1. I mean, oh, if it's 5-1, you may see me running down the streets of Benfica, <laughs> of Lisbon, you know? But um, absolutely, is it not going to be that? It will be, I think it'd be a tight game. Um, I can see like a 2-1 to Arsenal, maybe a 1-0. Um, I think it's going to be tight. Um, you know, these, these games, you know, 5-1, I just can't see it. I mean, Benfica, their coach, I mean, listen, it's a tough, it's a tough game. It's a tough game. We didn't want a tough game like this so early on. Um, it's a tough game. And if we're not, if we're not on our best, we could get knocked out. And, um, as I said, this is a really weird season and a really weird Arsenal. And Arsenal, that when you look at the players and if those players turn up, you'd have to make Arsenal the favourites. But there's been many a times this season when we ain't turned up. Exactly. And, you know, you've been like, you, we just looked a shadow. But the only bits of encouragement I will say is that, you know, big win at the weekend. And we were, up until the game against Wolves, as I said, the, the other Portuguese team, up until, you know, in England, the uh -huh. fugitives that played England, right, up until that game, you know, we were playing really well in the league. We picked it up. We, I mean, it had been a horrendous start to the season. And then we got, you know, over the Christmas, you know, we had Chelsea just before Christmas, beat them, went on a run. Over the January transfer period, we got rid of a lot of the Deadwood, like Mesut Ozil and these guys. We moved them on. And it was all positive and we were doing really well. And then we played Wolves in that game. We had a blistering first half, incident changing by the referees, um, you know, at the um, at the end of the half, we ended up losing that game, and then we lost our following game to Villa. But we've got back on track, I think. And yeah, I think it's going to be an interesting game. But you just cannot predict Arsenal this season. I, I know Benfica have been in a similar vein. I mean, I've been looking at your guys' results. I've been looking at where you are in the league. I've been sort of looking at what some of your fans have been saying, and I can see it's like Arsenal. It's like our grounds are similar. Our yep. teams are similar. Yep. You know I, mean? <laughs> I was just going to say, look, Robbie, I'm prepared here to make an executive decision on the Bifika podcast and offer you a long seat right beside me here on the podcast. Because if you just change the name Arsenal to Benfica, I could have sworn you're, you're, <laughs> you're describing Benfica up and down. I mean, you're, the games you're not supposed to win, they show up. The games you're supposed to absolutely demolish, you don't show up. I mean, it's like you're perfect. You fit right in on the Benfica podcast. Uh, <laughs> so whenever you want, bro, you got a seat here. Just come to New Jersey. Listen, um, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention this, right? Uh, as I told you before, I got a little piece of my heart that 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 you know sides with Arsenal. But I'm, there's millions and millions of Benfica fans who think of Arsenal in in you know in a positive way because one of our highlights of and of, of course this is a team that's won multiple Champions Leagues. We've had a rich history, you know, the last twenty years or thirty years wouldn't tell you so. But we we do have a rich history in, in, in world football. But one of our highlights goes back to 1991. Arsenal Benfica, a European Cup. Uh, we draw in Lisbon 1 1. He's a year scores a goal in Campbell. Uh, for you guys, I don't know what mm. Campbell. I know it wasn't Joel Campbell. Uh, he's <laughs> way, way before his time. Uh, and then we go for second leg into, uh, you know, back to, to London. Mm. Uh, and we, 
you know, we we we, we had one of our nicest performances. One of what a performance that we to this day we still talk about. Yeah. He's, he's scoring two goals, school cough scoring the other. Wind up beating you guys three to one, and we advanced on 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 a four two aggregate. Is that a game that you guys even think about, or is it just another game to you guys in the history of Arsenal football? It's just because to us, it's definitely a highlight. Yeah, we, we, no, we don't think about losses at all. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, and I'll tell you what, right? You know, the other thing as well, right? Possibly playing behind closed doors in this game might suit us more than Benfica. And the reason why I say that is that in London, there's a huge, huge Portuguese population yeah. and a huge Benfica population. And they would have, you know, you guys would have bought a massive amount of fans to the Emirates, and it would have been very much like, a, you know, it, 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 that would have inspired your players as well. So the fact that they're both behind closed doors might help possibly Arsenal. I mean, we would have bought thousands. Of, I, I mean, I, I remember I went to Lisbon when we played sport in Lisbon, and, um, you know, we bought loads of fans to that game, thousands, and that was a great. I love Lisbon as a city, by the way, beautiful. And But I think you would have had a passionate London following of Benfica fans, and that would have helped you a lot in the leg at the Emirates. So, possibly it's a slight advantage that it's behind closed doors for us. Um, but you know, I, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't remember. I, I, we have Kevin Campbell a lot of times um, on our shows, um, so I'll have to see if he remembers that. I bet he's forgotten it as well. <laughs> Some of the but videos, oh no, he won't forget the goal. <laughs> Some of the videos that have actually gone viral uh, of Benfica fans is 2017 when Benfica goes into uh, Old Trafford. They're losing, but the fans stayed after the game, supporting the team. And you, you, I mean, you, I, I think you, you, you know, you made a very incredible good point. Support. Yeah, incredible, yeah, incredible, support. incredible, support. incredible yeah. support. Um, and as I said, London in particular, there are a lot of Portuguese um people in London. Um, so they would have had a they would have had a massive following. Well, well, Robbie, right. we we have as Portuguese like to say we have ten point something million people living in Portugal, and we'd like to think that th we have actually more Portuguese people living outside of Portugal than in Portugal. So in in, in London, I'm in, I'm in London, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, listen, I got two more questions here before we wrap it up. One of them is um, out of all the fantastic players that have come out of Benfica Academy over the last uh, ten years or so. Uh, you know, Bernardo Silva, João Cancelo, Renato Sanchez, uh, uh, obviously João Felix, All Block, Ederson, uh, Victor Lindelof, Nelson Smith. I mean, I could just keep going on and on and on down the list. But th the question here is, out of all those players, which one uh, would you, uh, Robbie, the AFTV, the Arsenal uh, the fan, right, Mr. Gunner, uh, which one of those guys do you, you know, you wish you would have signed? Oof. Definitely not Lindelof. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Man hey. United could have him. He, he was an upgrade oh. over over some of the center backs you've had in recent years. So I, you know, uh, we, that's, don't that's need we, we don't need no no <laughs> Man United reject. Sorry. Um, um, I like the kid. The, the kid that's uh, um at the moment. That's uh, um is it Yao? Um, what's his name? He's Juan uh, Felix. Um, yeah, who's at uh, Atletico? Yes, yeah. yes. He lo he looks he looks an incredible player. I really really like him. Um, really like him. And I'll tell you what, another one of the month more recent ones. Ruben Diaz, oh, yeah, who, you got, sold to, that, who you sold to City, he looks a pro. They've made that's a great buy they've made there because what I like about him, he's a great defender, but he's got leadership qualities. You can see, you know, what I mean, he's the guy, he's always, you know, sometimes you can watch some of these games now and get with no sound, and you just he's constantly talking. And I'm like, how old is he? He's only young, he's like. You know, he, he's an incredible. I mean, there's been so, some of those players you named out. I mean, I think I'd have most of them. Those are some <laughs> really, really. I mean, Bernardo Silva, again, a city incredible player. I think he's very unlucky. I think if he's playing in another team, he'd start every week, you know? Yeah. So, um, no, that's that's some that's some really good players. Really, really good players. Uh, all of them apart from Lindelof. Okay, last one so, from me. Lindelof. <laughs> Last one for me, and this is this is most likely or probably the most important thing I'm going to say to you or ask you is, I want to know how much clout does Robbie have inside Arsenal, right? To the guys that the transfer department, the scouting department, because <laughs> Benfica have, you know, they currently have a player on the roster that could do for you what Bruno Fernandes has done for Manchester United. And if you could get to the scouting department and get his name out, Beasy, 
All right? You need to come and buy BZ as soon as possible. So if anyone's <laughs> listening to this from the scouting department, I know my Arsenal, please, Robbie, make this happen. It's easy 20 I already million. Know. Cheap, Hold cheap. Up. I already know that that's some player you're trying to get rid of. So maybe <laughs> we can do a swap deal for William. I'll, I'll do it. Yeah. I'll do it. I mean, you have to pay his wages, though, because Benfica, I mean, I think he makes more than the whole Benfica team combined. But I'll, at this point, I mean, look. Where did you bring him in from? Oh, he's been here for he's been here for quite a while. We brought him actually back from Atletico Madrid. He was out. He went out to Coruña when he was at Braga, Pas Freira, I believe, then Coruña, and then back to Braga, and then to uh, Atletico. Then they loaned him out. Yada yada. We got him, you know, back like five seasons ago from Atletico Madrid. Benfica's always had this love affair, this little circle of romance with Atletico Madrid, where we send players. This goes back to like. Early 2000s, when we sent Simon Sabrosa to Atletico Madrid for two players to be named later, it was a couple of bucks. Plus, to this day, we still don't know what two players were because they've never been presented. But all I know is that there's players in and out. We got a Raul Jimenez, who's now on the Portuguese club in in in, in EPL, as you mentioned. He, at the time, he was our record transfer uh, purchase for 22 and a half million. We're like, what? Yeah, the? Very it, good it, it, Very good player. At Benfica, it was strictly off the bench. We had, you know, Jonas, yeah, I, who's, I, you know. Yeah, I, I saw that, you know, but, you know, he at Wolves, he's been, he's yeah. been exceptional. He's, he's been exceptional. unfortunate that he got injured. Yeah, absolutely. One of the reasons why Wolves are performing so badly this season is he had that head clash with yep. um, Dan Luis. And he fractured his skull and he's been out. And I'll tell you, they've missed him because, uh, for me, he's one of the best strikers in the Premier League. Physical, strong, good finisher. So um, we actually have someone like that who I've compared many times. Or in Alfredo will tell you, we have a guy like that on the roster. We just purchased him. He's not just Benfica. He's Portugal's record transfer fee. Um, uh, what the, what's his name, bro? Darwin, Darwin Nunes. Darwin Nunes. Yeah, I, I'm, I, you can tell I'm a fan, right? Uh, Darwin <laughs> Nunes. We got him from second, I believe, Almeria in, in Spain, second division. We paid 25 mil for him. Uh, 21 years, uh, 20 year old Uruguayan. He plays with that same, you know, physicality, that that same anger. You know, he just never say die attitude. Reminds me very much of a Raul Jimenez. I just, I just don't think he's Raul Jimenez is a little bit better with the ball at his feet than Darwin Nunes, but he's still very young. So I, I know you asked us in, in in your own pod about you know, some of the danger players. And, you know, we didn't really mention because he hasn't really been performing to expectations, but he's mm. the type of guy that's, that that could cause uh, some trouble to your back line because he does have that physicality. So just think about Raul Jimenez, but this guy's got a little bit more pace, I believe, a little bit okay. more physicality to him. Very okay. interesting. He's a guy that I think he'll be the next guy out of Benfica that'll go for big bucks. But I think right now the important thing is if anyone's listening, Beasy, I don't know his full name. Alfredo knows his full name. I know him as the guy can be your next Bruno Ferrand for Arsenal, guys. Mr. No. Gunners, come get this guy. Come get no him ASAP. Fair. No fair. Oh, just by how you're talking, I already know <laughs> what type of player it is. We've spent, it's been hard enough getting rid of some of the duds that we've got here. We don't need no more. Trust He's me. He's actually yeah. not a terrible player. We just like to get on him because, as you know, Right. When you when your team is not putting up the results that you expect, you go after the leaders, the guys that have been there the longest. And so, you know, we I, I bang on them a lot more than I should, uh, because truthfully, when Benfica are playing well, he's the guy involved as much as we hate to say, because we've been like, bro, this guy needs to go. But when Benfica are going well, he's the guy in the middle of everything. So, I mean, he's not he's not that bad of a player, but we just yeah. like to get on him. But that Diaz, though, that Diaz that you let go, I mean, surely that must have been a big... If, I don't know how he played in Portugal, but if he played like how he's been playing in the Premier League, surely that's a big miss for your team. To tell you a little bit about him, and Alfredo knows more about him than I do in his youth, but this is a guy that's been prepped, right, to become the next Benfica captain. This started at like 14 years old, and there's videos of him... Um, in the youth, Benfica was, you know, reaching the youth league, uh, Champions League finals. Whatever, and you see in like that video of him giving the motivational speeches and having every like this guy just been a natural born leader. So mm -hmm. much so he he captained Benfica, the main squad for one game, which was his last game right before he got, you know, shipped off the city. And there was tears. I mean, the guys. Were, and I, 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 I have to eat some crow here. Um, I have to admit this publicly. Uh, I've always been a Ruben Diaz fan. I just didn't think his importance to Benfica was as great as it was because now that he's left, you definitely see that leadership role, right? Mm. There's something that's left outside the locker room and you see what he's done to that Manchester City locker room. 
and now I think his importance gets emphasized with each passing game, and you just see what he's done there. You see how we've kind of, you know, gotten backwards a little bit, stumbled since his departure. So Ruben is just, man, he's 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 going to be an icon at Benfica. Uh, as I said, he's from a very young age. We've been trying to prep him to, for this leadership role, and I couldn't be happier that he's actually, uh, you know, doing that now. Unfortunately, it, not in red and blue, but, you know, it is what it is. We hope to get yeah. back at some point. Now, uh, Robbie, we we want to take you. Uh, we want to thank you for your for your time. If you're not following AFTV on on YouTube and and their all their multitude of platforms, then you should. Uh, and the reason for that is because uh, you know it's fans uh, fans making uh, or producing content uh, for fans, and, and much like what we do here at Bifika Podcast. Uh, and so Bifika sure. and then there, you know, they, we Robbie, we have a platform that we, a bunch of guys, we've started. And we, I think we've, we've gotten, you know, done tremendous strides over the last two seasons, but it's it's still a relatively young project. But it's, we have the little Arsenal fan. We'll get to that point at some, at some point. We're getting a lot of attention in Portugal, which is beautiful. But, you know, again, as I mentioned before, us at Benfica, Benent, us here at Benfica Podcast, man, we really appreciate you taking the time to come in and speaking to us for a few minutes because you guys are a total inspiration for what we do. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people around the world, man, we couldn't be happier. Uh, I hope the next time we talk, me and Alfredo have a smile on our faces and you have a frown. But uh, <laughs> we'll see what happens. It'll most likely be the other way around. But, man, we could not be uh, more thankful for, for the opportunity uh, in, to having to speak to you, brother. I uh, appreciate coming on and um, keep up the good work with what you guys are doing. Always great to speak to real fans and um, hopefully I'll have to smile on my face, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, we, you, we, we, we need this one badly, man. We need this. We need this. Also, we need this this season. So, But it should be a great game. I'm, I'm really, really looking forward to it because sometimes in the Europa League, you're playing teams and you're like, mm, Thursday night. <laughs> it, we got this little saying over here. There's a little saying over here amongst like the sort of big teams. And if you, you know you've got your friends and everybody will be bantering each other. And people will say, well, look, oh, I don't want to be playing on a Thursday night. That's how, <laughs> that's how people look down on the Europa League over here. But um, when you're playing a team like Benfica, you're like, no, actually, this is a big game. So I'm really looking forward to it. So it um, should be fantastic. Robbie, that Thursday night Joe carries over to Portugal. Trust me, we've used it plenty on Sporting Lisbon over the years. Like, you know, you guys worry about playing on Thursdays. We'll worry about playing on yeah. Tuesdays. and when, But now it's backfired. So backfired. <laughs> foot's on, the shoe's on the other foot. Yep. Thanks again, uh, Robbie, and have a good one. And obviously, uh, may the best team win. Appreciate it. <laughs>